If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Today, we're back on a Sunday to have a Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime debate. But before I bring my guests in, before we get that started, I want to remind you of a couple things coming up here at the Dusty Wheel. First, tomorrow we're doing another watch party test over on Twitch. Yeah, we started a channel over there to watch the works of the cast and crew together. And we're doing our test because, you know, we're, we're just figuring things out. Our first official date will, like I said, will be March 7th on Sunday. You'll hear more about that as the week progresses. But make sure to go check us out at The Dusty Wheel on Twitch. Now, this week here on YouTube at The Dusty Wheel, we have a special Watt Challenge. Hopefully you've all been watching this. Over 40 fans have put together Wheel of Time song parodies and submitted them for this competition. It's amazing. Now, because so many of you did that, we have a second show that's going to be Tuesday night before the finals. So be back here on Tuesday night for the wild card round of our Wheel of Time song parody challenge. The fans who have submitted this need your votes. They need you to be there because only six will go into the finals from 24 submissions. So they need you to listen and vote for them because Wednesday we're going to be back here at 9 p.m. Eastern for the finals of the Wheel of Time Song Parody Challenge. And this is big for people that win this. You know, the winner, like we announced just a couple days ago, is going to win book covers from Juniper Books. If you haven't seen those, you can check those out on social media. They're amazing. The winner will get that. And we have prizes for the second and third place along with best visual presentation and best singer. So there'll be lots of winners on Wednesday. Please be here on Tuesday and Wednesday to help pick the winner of that competition. So that is all we're gonna say about that for now. Let's get to the reason why you're all here for a Wheel of Time and Amazon Prime debate. And to do that with me, I have four excellent friends and uh, now at this point, debate participants. Let me welcome them to the show. Welcome to the Dusty Wheel U4. How are you doing? Cheers. Cheers to see you all. <laughs> uh, the biggest yeah. of cheers, my good little. It's a mug flexing. I like it. I like it. So uh, we have Katie Sadai up in our upper left. She is Fun. going to be on Team Faith in Rafe. I love the I love the pick there. That really was thematic. With uh, we'll talk about the theme of this debate here. She will be paired with Elliot of Thread Mag. Cool. Hey, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I want to say Thread Magazine. You can find them on Instagram or just Thread, I guess, uh, is how they go by. So Elliot, thank you for joining us again. It's awesome to thank see you. you. Nice and to see then, you too. Yeah, thank yeah, it's you. awesome to see. You. Uh, and then as our second team. We have Team Full Heron Marks, and that's Suana from the Weaves the Wheel community, and Hi. Andrew from the Black Tower Podcast. How are you both doing? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. I, lo I love seeing all of your faces here. So tonight's, or I guess I should say today's debate, the theme I gave everyone was uh, in the room where it happens. And that's because each of these questions has something to do with the writer's room and the decisions being made by Rafe and his team. And I thought, why not put these four 
find people in the same position because uh, they have to make some decisions through this debate. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to what you all came up with. So why don't we get started with this? Let me remind everybody how this works. There's going to be one participant from each team and they're going to make a case for answering the question that I bring up here. Then at the end of the debate, their fellow teamer will come back on and have a chance to, for 30 seconds, make another final thought or note. Then all of you in chat will vote the winner of that round. So we need you to be there, logged in here on YouTube. If you're seeing this on Facebook, on Twitter, anywhere else, please come over to YouTube so you can vote live because the winner of this debate will definitely get some Dusty Wheel swag. Uh, so, so beyond that, it's just, you know, uh, claim to fame, I guess, <laughs> for winning the Wheel of Time and Amazon Prime debate. Okay, I think that's enough of the rules. We'll, we'll figure some things out as we go. Why don't we get down to our first question? And for that first question, Andrew of Full Heron Marks team will be going against Katie in Faith in Rafe. So why don't I set this up? The other two participants, they're gonna, they're gonna hide their, their video so we can see just these two participants uh, going and, and discussing this question. So I will start bringing up this question while that all gets worked out and Andrew and Katie get ready. So our first question here is, it starts like this. Wheel of Time fandom has great trepidation around the C word, changes. Which is especially clear when speaking with fans at the F word, or Facebook is what we call it around here. In fact, in response to a question, Sarah Nakamura, who's the Wheel of Time TV consultant and fan, asked Rafe during a recent Q&A on Instagram stories about when they've discussed possible changes, Rafe replied, there were moments when a thrilled room full of writers would go, we've cracked it, it's amazing. But can insert book canon person place thing be insert non-canon idea instead? And Sarah's resounding withering stare would tell us to go back to the drawing board. Rip Perrin talking to a bear. <laughs> so this, this was a thing when we heard this answer, this idea of Perrin might have at some point in the show talk to a bear if not for that withering stare from Sarah. So with that in mind, to my two contestants here, and to start us off, it will be Andrew that starts us off. The question is, other than Perrin talking to a bear, I want you to crack the case in the writer's room. Choose a canon person, place, thing, or event from New Spring through The Great Hunt and replace it with a non-canon idea. Actually, I think I expanded that to even The Dragon Reborn. Replace it with a non-canon idea and convince Sarah Nakamura that this change should be made. So their goal here, starting with Andrew, is to convince, if they could, Sarah Nakamura, that they can <laughs> replace a canon idea, person, place, thing, or event, with a non-canon non one. So your two minutes that you have, Andrew, begins now. Sweet. So our idea was to completely get rid of Barillon, uh, the place. So... Change men, have her actually be from Candor. You can still have her tragic backstory of uh, what happens with her mother. Uh, you can still have her father be busy and not able to really pay attention to her as much and kind of, uh, as the books put it, kind of quell her tomboyish tendencies. Um, but living up there and going through this, and you can have her father uh, eventually die to a trollic raid from the Blight, uh, which prompts men to then go and travel around and perform all these odd jobs and kind of things that, that she does. Uh, during which time she would, uh, of course, come across our favorite glee man, Tom. Uh, and at some point traveling around, she would very likely also come across Moraine. So you preserve that Moraine has met her before metric. And then she gets wind that a certain Omerlin is going to Faldara. She's a little homesick. So she goes uh, back to Faldara to kind of see the Omerlin and you know, just an excuse to go and kind of get a, a flash of home. And then we get the scene where Rand is trying to uh, sneak out and all the gates are closed. And that's where Rand and men meet. And she sticks with the party after then. It allows uh, more of their relationship and stuff to kind of develop. And uh, let's start a little bit earlier. And it removes the need for Barillon so that you can focus more on like Faldara and you can focus more on like Camelin and stuff like that rather than having to include what would what is really a smaller town that we see like once. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting idea to get rid of Berlin and then move all of those kind of features up North. Uh, so the same question goes out to 
Katie, what it was your team's idea here as far as replacing a canon event, person, thing, whatever, with a non-canon one? Yes. So we um, went in a different direction. We thought a little bit bigger picture. Um, instead of, we thought that prophecy could be misunderstood. There's not just one dragon who will be reborn to save the world, but two, one man and one woman. Rand and Egwene together will be the dragon reborn, dragons reborn, plural. Making them both dragons doesn't actually change their story arc or journeys too much. The ideas of two dragons fits within being canon without actually being canon. And most importantly, it emphasizes the balance between genders by elevating Egwene's journey, making her equally as important as Rand. We know the foundation of the Wheel of Time is the balance between male and female, and that the greatest feats of channeling were done with men and women working together. This addition won't change the core story. We're allowing the audience to believe there is still just one dragon reborn, Randall Thor. There'll be a few more prophecies um, that Egwene will eventually satisfy, and other hints that the dragon isn't who we think. In the end, it's revealed that Egwene is also the dragon reborn. Her authority through the Amaralyn seat and Rand's authority as Kara Karn are what the world needs in the last battle. This is obviously not canon, <laughs> but fits well within. Two souls can be reborn or spun out of the wheel together, like Brigitte and Gaidal Cain. And by elevating Egwene's role in legend and prophecy, we validate her rise to power and her success as a leader. The turning of the Wheel of Time is dependent on the balance between Sidene and Sidar, between male and female, between light and dark, and the world needs both of them, both Thrand and Egwene, as equals, as dragons, to save the world. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's a interesting first cases. So now <laughs> I, I so we have this concept of Berlan and moving Minstripe north. Now this concept of some added prophecy as far as there being two dragons, bringing some balance to this idea of the dragon into the story itself. Really interesting. I'm watching people in chat kind of respond to these. Now you both will have one minute to rebut the other person's ideas. So we'll go back to you, Andrew, at this point. You now have one minute to convince us why your idea is the right one and, and to not choose the one that Katie's just proposed. Go ahead. Uh, so I like my idea because it doesn't necessarily inherently change anything about the characters we've read and love. You still keep the same motif. You still can keep a relatively similar backstory while still more than accounting for them, still doing everything that we've read uh, men do. With the Egwene thing, making her another dragon reborn I think it removes some of what makes a Gawain so incredible as a character as she is by herself, because then it's too easy to throw off some of what she does on, well, she's now the dragon reborn. She's Taviran as well. Um, I think her, what makes her story so impactful and so amazing is the fact that she does all of this, goes through all of these horrible, horrible situations and rises and makes an ultimate sacrifice because of what she's gone through without being Taviran, without being a child of prophecy. Uh, without having all of this going on. Yeah, okay, interesting uh, uh, response there. Okay, Katie, now it goes back to you. Your, your last uh, comment here for a minute before we bring your team members back in here. So go ahead with your, uh, yeah, what's your response? Again, I think that moving men from, you know, Barillon to Camelin, that's just, that's small potatoes. That's not really a big change that we need for for the story. It doesn't, go back to some of the core themes of the story either. Ra raising Egwene and her role in the story to making her as Rand's equal is the way to do it. This isn't too far off from her current arc in the last battle, but gives her role more weight. It doesn't take away from anyone's accomplishments. It elevates the stakes of Egwene's sacrifice. With Bale Balefires destroying the world, not just the battlefield, her purpose could be to save the world from the effects of Balefire. And that is, you know, her sacrifice is what saves the world, just like Rand's sacrifice saves the world. And Egwene said it best, am I not allowed to be a hero too? Okay. So yeah, interesting, uh, both of you. It, it's so it's so interesting to watch chat while you're discussing these ideas and trying to take them all in. Let's uh, pull you two off the screen here for a moment. Let's bring everybody uh, back in to the show. And we're gonna give your team members, uh, once they're back with us, Taylor bring them back in, and we'll give them a chance for 30 seconds here to make some final thoughts, some final notes here. So why don't we go to you first, Elliot, 
What is your thought here? You have 30 seconds. Uh, how would you respond to this? Um, okay, well, I think the real advantage with um, making there be two Dragons Reborn is really it gives also fans of the book something new uh, to latch onto with the TV series and be excited for season two. You know, it's a big change and it will have, you know, not just new people speculating, but also, you know, book fans as well. So it will give everyone the same chance to be you know, really excited and, and okay. guessing what's going to happen next. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah, that's an interesting uh, case to be made as far as, you know, why to go that big and let's go. Maybe Swana, you have 30 seconds. Why don't you give us your final thoughts on this first question? First of all, Katie, I actually don't hate the idea of a second dragon. I don't agree with the argument though. And you said that Egwene could be a hero by being a dragon. Egwene is a hero. Egwene is a badass. She doesn't need to be a dragon. She has her own story and she's phenomenal as she is. So why change her character? Why fix what's already perfection? So yeah, uh, that's an interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting question there uh, to uh, all of you. Let's uh, let's uh, bring everybody back into the show here. Uh, I think Andrew's going to come back in and. Uh, yeah, and, and by just a note to the to when we bring everybody back for all four of you speaking, you don't have to worry about leaving the show. Uh, we'll keep all four of you here just on the next question. So, um, yeah, so this is a really interesting one. And, and like I said, chat's been really interesting about this. So, Taylor, why don't you throw in the question now for chat, which is who actually won this debate for those that are watching on this first question? We'll get to the next one. So Taylor's going to add that to chat. Like I said, if you want to vote for your winner here, you have to be here on YouTube with us. You have to be logged in. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are as far as the answer to this question. I I, I don't know but I, that I have an answer. Maybe after the show, as we kind of debrief, we'll go through this. Um, uh, this one's really tough. So yeah, you, you'll see how to vote here. If you haven't ever voted in the chat before, you'll put exclamation point uh, I, vote and then H or exclamation point vote and then R. H is for the full Heron Marks. That's for Andrew Andrew's answer. You'll use R for Faith and Rafe. That was Katie's. So H if you believe Andrew and Berlan. R if you believe that the right answer here was for uh, Katie's answer about having two dragons. So, uh, and we told everybody, like I said, it's exclamation point vote and then space and then it's H for Andrew's answer or R, Faith and Wraith, for Katie's answer here. So, uh, <laughs> our, our participants here in the debate are also allowed to vote if they're in chat. And we won't we won't make fun of you too much. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to, you're allowed to vote. So, <laughs> call me out. It's fine. So yeah, we'll this shamelessly is... vote for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's going to be an interesting one. We're going to reveal the winner of that. Uh, you can continue voting, but if you vote from now through this next question, it's only for this question. So you can continue voting until the next question's over. Taylor will end the vote at that point. We'll find out who the winner was, and then we'll start a new vote here. So while you be vote, we're going to take everybody off the screen again, and we're going to get on to our second question. And our second question is going to be Elliot for Faith and Rafe and Suana for Full Heron Marks. And, and Katie and Andrew are going to wait in, in the back for us until this topic, and we bring them back on for final thoughts. So... Uh, once that uh, Elliot and Swan are ready, and here they are, uh, let's get started with question number two. So question number two begins, an argument breaks out in the writer's room over passionate disagreement about using book dialogue in a pivotal scene at the end of the eye of the world versus starting from scratch. You don't particularly care about that scene dialogue, but you realize in that moment there is one piece of dialogue you do believe must make it from the books to the TV show, word for word, so you interrupt your fellow writers and begin reading your passage. Now, both of you have up to two minutes to read the passage of dialogue you've selected from New Spring Through the Dragon Reborn that you believe must be included in the TV show word for word. And then I'll give you up to two minutes also to make a rebuttal and make your case for why you chose this. So let's begin. And Elliot, we're going to start with you. Go ahead and read to us your passage that you chose that you believe needs to make its way from the books to the TV show word for word. Okay, right. Forgive me if um, Nynaeve begin, begins to sound a bit queenly here. Um, <laughs> right, so <clears throat> Nynaeve's voice steadied. Some women don't ask for land or gold, just the man. And the man who would ask her to accept so little would not be worthy of her. 
You are a remarkable woman, as beautiful as the sunrise and as fierce as a warrior. You are a lioness wisdom. A wisdom seldom weds. She paused to take a deep breath as if stealing herself. But if I go to Tarvolan, it may be that I will be something other than a wisdom. I said I marry as seldom as wisdoms. Few men can live with so power in a wife, dimming them by her radiance, whether she wishes to or not. Some men are strong enough. I know one such. If there could have been any doubt, her look left none to whom she meant. All I have is a sword and a war I cannot win, but can never stop fighting. I've told you I care nothing for that. Light, you've made me say more than is proper already. Will you shame me to the point of asking you? I will never shame you. The gentle tone like a caress sounded odd in Rand's ears, in the warder's voice, but it made Nynaeve's eyes brighten. I will hate the man you choose because he is not me, but love him if he makes you smile. No woman deserves the sure knowledge of Widow's Black as her bride price, you least of all. He set the untouched cup on the ground and rose. I must check on the horses. Nynaeve remained there kneeling after he had gone. Sleep or no, Rand closed his eyes. He did not think the wisdom would like it if he watched her cry. Scene. <laughs> scene. I love it. So uh, I wanted to kind of be like, I wanted to clap a little bit. Like, you know, you hear someone reading his dialogue at the end, you want to like, oh, interesting. So yeah, and, and that fit in really well, the timing. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you very much. That was an interesting, an interesting choice. You have such so much to choose from. I know this was a really difficult choice. So yeah, uh, I, again, interesting watching kind of chat's feedback as it's going on. So now let's go to you, Swana. Go ahead and read us what choice you believe needs to be the dialogue moving from the books word for word into the TV show. And you have two minutes to do so and you can go ahead now. Okay, I'm going with the end of Great Hunt. Rand grabbed Ingatar's lapels. You aren't making any sense. He can't mean what he's saying. He can't say it plain, whatever you mean. You are talking crazy. For the first time, Ingatar looked at Rand. His eyes shone with unshed tears. You are a better man than I, shepherd or lord, a better man. The prophecy says, let he, let who sound me think not of glory, but only salvation. It was my salvation I was thinking of. I would sound the horn and lead the heroes of the ages against Sheogul. Surely that would have been enough to save me. No man can walk so long in the shadow that he cannot come again to the light. That is what they say. Surely that would have been enough to wash away what I have been done. So it's the moment that Ingatar reveals himself and my heart broke. Yeah, that's a that's a great choice too. Yeah, <laughs> the um, yeah these are and then someone asked in chat, uh, you know, was this between this wasn't just either world. This was from New Spring. They could choose anything from New Spring to the Dragon Reborn. There was a lot to be able to choose from, and it makes it tough probably to have so much. Yeah. Um, Great, great choices. Now I will give you, like I said, since you only had to read those and you couldn't talk about why you wanted to choose those scenes, your rebuttal this time will be up to two minutes. And so you can speak to your choice and you can rebut the other choice if you'd like. And we'll go back to you, Elliot, here. You have two minutes and go ahead. Okay, well, I'm not gonna rebut that scene because I also love it and I think it's great. But I will say for uh, our scene, that I think this, this section really much has it all. It's got wonderful dialogue, character development, and it's the type of scene that just oozes from the page and onto the screen. Um, I think one of the reasons it works so well is because you have sort of like Rand's involvement in there. So it's, it's a very tender moment with two characters confessing their feelings for each other. Um, and the audience is intruding on it just as Rand is. And so he kind of acts as our gateway, which I think really uh, adds a sort of level of, of authenticity and believability to the scene. Um, and it also gives you um, cinematically some quite interesting options on how you film a scene like that. Like how, off, how long do you spend on Rand's sort of reaction to it? When do you cut to Nynaeve? And also Rand's reaction works really nice bookending the scene. So it just, as a whole, it just fits so well. And I think would translate really well. Um, and lastly, um, we learn so much about Lan from this interaction, you know, his unshakable belief that his destiny involves dying for a kingdom he never ruled. And I think part of his arc is choosing between Nynaeve and that believed destiny. And this marks a pivotal sort of almost start to that journey. 
And, you know, we all know how much payoff that journey has at the end. So I'll just finish by saying, Nynaeve asking, will he ride alone will not have half the impact it does if this scene doesn't stay. Okay, yeah, uh, interesting case to be made there. Uh, the same option goes to you here. You have up to two minutes here, Swana, to talk about the reasoning why you chose yours, why you believe that's the best, and or uh, respond to the choice that you're, uh, that, uh, that Elliot's made here. So go ahead. Okay, um, Elliot also killed it because I absolutely love that scene. Uh, Lan and Nynaeve, brilliant characters. Um, but I have to go with Ingatar because this is the first moment that Rand really realizes that just anyone can be bought by the shadow, that even those that he trusts and admires can belong to the dark one. Even the most noble of characters can be swayed. And it's filled with so much emotion. And it's such a WTF moment as well for the reader, for the viewer to go, oh, that can happen. Oh my God. And Ingtar's words are so impactful it's just yes i belong to the shadow but there was a reason and i truly believe i can come back from it and he talks about the salvation that the horn will bring him in that moment we also understand the importance of the horn of valir not just the fact that it could win the last battle but it could save the world this is tough. <laughs> okay, so we'll take you we'll take you all away, and then we'll uh, bring uh, both the team members, Andrew and Katie. You can come back on, and we'll get all four of you on screen this time. And now we'll give you the option to you have up to thirty seconds here to respond about either make some final thoughts or a final case of why you believe that yours is the one that fans should choose and that Rafe and his team should choose. And we'll go to you uh, first. Why don't we start with you, Andrew? Go ahead. You have thirty seconds. All right, I'm trying to get the light right. So I think I can surmise the argument by the ending of the scene where Rand says, I know Ingtar, Rand drew a deep breath, a deep breath the light shine on you, Lord Ingtar, house of Sanoa, and may you shelter in the palm of the creator's hand. The last embrace of the mother welcomes you home. And Ingtar says, thank you softly while feeling calm and content. It, you don't get better feels than that. Okay, okay. Uh, interesting. <laughs> This is so, I love, by the way, I love watching chat because they're always, I don't want to pick. I can't pick between these two. So let's see if, uh, Katie, you have 30 seconds here. Do you, let's see if you have a final thought that might, uh, you know, help people in chat make a choice between these two. Go ahead. You know, there, there are such, sad to say, there's such rare times when Robert Jordan really explores romance in the Wheel of Time. And Nine Even Lan is probably his most fleshed out romance that he has in this scene is just so pitiful, pitiful, um, pitiful for setting them up and it just needs to be in there okay yeah interesting case to be made here uh thank you for making all of those comments to people in chat before we talk about this at all let's let's throw up the winner taylor um of the first debate question let's find out uh who actually won that i think chat will see it a little bit before we do <laughs> uh, but you if you did vote in that thank you very much for taking part you will vote here shortly so team full heron marks won the first debate uh with 70 percent of the vote so that was what the choice. Congratulations to Suana and Andrew there. You took the first round. Now it's time to, yeah, yeah. Now it's I'm time to vote. surprised it was by that big of a margin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you never I know. It, I was like, I don't want to argue against that. <laughs> you never know what the chat's going to come up with. So Taylor, go ahead and throw our set round two vote and let's get that started. For those of you that are watching right now, Again, if you're not logged in, you can't vote, please do. I'd love to hear your, we'd love to have you be part of the vote and determining who won round two. If you remember round two, again, you're voting for H, Team Full Heron Marks, if you believe that Suwana's case was the best one and that it should be the Inktar scene. You're voting for Team R, if you believe Elliot's case, that it should be the scene between Lan and Nynaeve. So it's H again, I exclamation point vote H for Ingtar basically, or it is exclamation point vote R for Lan and Nynaeve. 
So that's a that was I I, was, I didn't know what scenes you guys would pick. So that's a lot of fun for me to kind of go like, what are they going to choose here? So to chat, this is open. We're gonna leave this vote open. We're gonna move on here shortly to question three. We'll leave this vote open, and like I said, at the end of this next round, we will tell you who won round two. So that being said, we'll take you all off the screen here. And our next two debate participants for question three is Katie from Faith and Wraith and Suana from Full Heron Marks. So Elliot and Andrew will leave us here shortly. And, and once we're ready, looks like we are, we will get to now the third question. You were chosen as a writer in Rafe's writing room for season one. You arrive on your first day, excited to be writing for your favorite fantasy fiction series. After meeting your fellow writers, Rafe tells you that it has been determined that five leading interests from a single village is too many. And that before you leave that day, your first day, you must choose one of the Emmonsfield five, Egwene, Rand, Nynaeve, Perrin, or Matt, all vital in key ways, the wheel has woven this ending to the third age, to be removed completely from the story forever. Convince the writer's room in live chat right now that your cho choice is the right choice. And I feel bad here before we set this up. Uh, if you choose the same one, you have to have had a second choice ready to go. So <laughs> I hope you haven't chosen necessarily the same ones, but it could happen. There's only five choices here. And Katie, you get to go first. So I will put you first here. Uh, you get to try to convince live chat of your choice. Which of the five would you completely remove from the story? Um, you I have two I minutes, have sorry. <laughs> okay, yep. I think I have a little bit of advantage. I already see chat going crazy about removing Perrin. It really... <laughs> we have to talk about what the purpose of removing a main character for the adaptation is. This removing someone, one of the main characters, allows us to streamline the story. We, we really want to explore the depth of these characters. We really want to explore Rand's journey, Egwene's journey, Nynaeve's journey, and Matt's journey. And... And that means Perrin has to go. Perrin spends a lot of the time of the books kind of on side quests, side plots, doing stuff that's not as important, that's not bringing us directly to the last battle. He spends, like, Fael is stuck with the Shido for two books. If we cut Perrin, we're cutting a lot of blow, a lot of needless complexity. We are cutting all of the wolf, wolf brothers, but that means that we don't have to try to explain that magic within the magic system. So it, it actually allows us to kind of focus in what is the main magic system? What's the main plot? How are we getting to these characters to the last battle and allowing us to fully explore them rather than wasting time on the wise ones and the Mayans and, and Masima and because Perrin is chasing Mazima for so long, and then his other villains are Slayer, who is also not necessarily the, you know, the most evil villain that we have in the story. Um, it sucks, but it's just that's that's what we need to do if we're looking at these five. Okay, uh, Perrin is your choice. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> This is a tough one, honestly. Uh, so, Swana, I apologize if, if Perrin was also your choice, but who is the person, not Perrin, that you believe should be removed, or you as a writer in Rafe's writing room would suggest to be removed completely from the series if you only had to pick from these five? And I'll give you two minutes, and go ahead and make your case. Well, first of all, Matt, thank you for setting me up to fail. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I totally was going to pick Perrin. And the character I'm going to have to pick now, I would like to tell you this is Andrew's choice. And so please direct your hate mail to him. It is <laughs> Nynaeve, uh, which I personally don't agree with. Uh, but his reasons for Nynaeve to be cut are because she conducts a great deal of healing. And that's her main responsibility in the stories. And he feels that someone else could do the healing. In particular, there is an Aes Sedai of the Yellow Ajar who happens to bond with Dharma Flynn, the Asherman, who is probably the best healer in the entire series. And her name is Cora Lee. She belongs to the Yellow Ajar and she's actually considered one of the greatest healers in the White Tower, uh, just above uh, Suwana and above uh, Samiko as well. The fact that she would bond with Dharma Flynn would make her 
be encouraged to try new forms of healing and therefore highly likely to discover how to heal still in how to heal gentlin how to heal madness because she would be working with the national man and she would have great purpose to do so so thank you andrew for your argument congratulations katie you are right in this one. <laughs> wow you're already you're leaving the field is that, is that i right? love him he's my favorite character i hate to do Goodness. this was the worst <laughs> okay yeah this is this is why it's fun to put you in these really difficult situations so uh it, let's go back to you uh katie uh, because interesting points made here actually and i think a case could be made for a lot of uh, not including a lot of or each one of these individuals so uh, you have up to a minute uh, if you'd like to make any additional or have additional thoughts or rebuttal here to what swana just said go ahead yeah so i mean i think there is you know, a case for Nynaeve too, because she was actually also our backup. <laughs> um, but keeping her, she's like, um, I like to think of her as the sidekick, right? You always need like the hero and the sidekick. And for so much of the story, she's there helping Rand. She provides that female half to the story, that balance. And so you need her in the story. And then also, when we're leaving the two rivers, if we cut Perrin and keep Nynaeve, that means you have two men and two women leaving. And so that kind of keeps with this <laughs> theme of balance. Um, another reason to keep Nynaeve is that her fight with Mo Gideon is just iconic and I love it and it has to be there. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I like that you started off a little bit like, um making a case for Nynaeve. That was very nice of you. <laughs> that was very kind. I feel like you did a service there that helped out Swan a bit. So Swan, you have up to a minute here to go ahead and make your rebuttal or final thoughts before we bring your fellow team members back in. Go ahead. Okay. Well, my rebuttal to what Katie said about uh, Nynaeve being the balance in the power for the female half, a queen can do that. So for that side, I feel like that's very easily fixed. Um, why else could Nynaeve be removed and Perrin not? Perrin teaches Egwene the flame of Tar Valon. And that's it. She learns that we've, because of Perrin, without Perrin, she doesn't learn that she doesn't defeat Mazarim Taim and ultimately may not have taken him out in the last battle and it could have been completely swayed. Okay. Uh, interesting comments here. Let's take you all off the screen. We'll let everybody come back in. Uh, by the way, and you're here for a Wadham Prime debate. Um, and I, I totally forgot to throw this one. This is spoilers, obviously, right? Uh, so we'll, we'll bring everybody back on here and give all the, the respondents. But yes, if you are watching a Wadham Prime debate and, and at this point about what we're going to do with the TV show and the books and you hadn't read the books all the way, I feel bad. Uh, but we're going to give your team members now an opportunity to f give a final 30 seconds a response here. And I think we'll go to, uh, let's go to you, Andrew. What's, what's your 30 second final thought? Uh, so when the pattern forces you to choose your second draft pick, you gotta make the best you can. There there are other characters that are already yellow Aes Sedai that uh, like Suana made the comment of that could fulfill Nynaeve's healing uh, that she does of stilling and madness and gentling. Uh, and I think that could be an incredible device to give some, some like um, some validity back to the White Tower. Interesting. Okay. 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 Final thoughts here from you, Elliot. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I mean, Perrin is one of my favorites, so it's heartbreaking. But a lot of the reasons we like him is he's a character with his own urgency and he makes his own story. And that's why he's the easiest to remove, because by removing him, you, you, you rem he's not as intertwined with other characters. So in terms of overall story, it's easier to get rid of Perrin as heartbreaking as it is. <laughs> okay, let's let's uh, thank you all for making that. You know, this one was probably the most difficult question. Uh, lots of love and hate in chat, I'll be honest. <laughs> My favorite it, comment was Art. Fine. Art was like, I hate everyone now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so... Okay, if, you can send me your hate mail, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the flack for the naive choice. I'll, I'll take it, it's okay. 
Okay, so I mean, it was our second choice too, so it's yeah, it's not it just you. <laughs> I like that you I both think, were thinking they're Perrin honest, and they're Nynaeve. Both bad choice as well. There, there you go. Perrin and Nynaeve are the ones that these four individuals, if you want to hate on them, they, they all believe that they are expendable. Oh man, can you imagine being in the writers' room and having that moment? Oh, that would be. Uh, I, I enjoyed. Yeah, I enjoyed writing that question. <laughs> just get rid of all five and just start over new, random new characters. Okay, so let's show the winner of the last round, Taylor. Go ahead and close that out and give us the winner here. Uh, and then we will, like I said, uh, final thoughts. We'll start up the, the vote for the for the, this latest round and we'll jump to the next question. So it, it looks like the winner of this is Team R with 56% of the vote. So Team Full Hair and Marks has one point here. Team Faith and Rafe has one point also. So we're split. I love it. Oh, let's, okay. let's not lie. They have two. All right. <laughs> hey, you don't know what people are going to vote. You don't know. I'll be honest. This one, I, I think some strong case could be made for, you know, in my mind of Nine versus Perrin. Like, I don't think that there's, for me, there's not like a strong, like, have to have. Although, again, there's cases to be made for both. I think you did, you, you all did that. So let's go ahead and throw the yeah, vote up. Like we should get the sympathy vote because I had to, <laughs> I had to discredit my favorite character in literature, not just in a series, but in literature. So please give me a sympathy vote. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's throw that up there. Uh, I like the final appeal for for sympathy vote. Don't devote it yet. You'll see it in chat. Again, not watching us here or not logged in. Please do. These teams need your votes. Uh, it's one to one at this point. It looks like the poll has been opened. Again, if you believe Perrin was the right person out of the five to cut, you're going to do exclamation point vote space R. If you believe the right person to cut was actually naive, you're going to do exclamation point vote H. And I can tell our participants are watching chat right now to get a feel of the pulse of what the answer <laughs> like might be. Like all of our here. eyes are glued. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Taylor, let's take everybody off here and let's jump on to our next question. And our participants in this one will be Andrew from Full Hair and Marks and Elliot from Faith and Rafe. So once we have them situated and Swana and Katie have, uh, have, have, have taken a break here, we'll bring them back on. Welcome back, gentlemen. So uh, here we go. Uh, question four goes like this. A famous Wheel of Time quote goes as follows. He came like the wind, like the wind touched everything, and like the wind was gone. From the Dragon Reborn by Loyal, son of Errant, son of Helon, the Fourth Age. The wind is an important feature to the Wheel of Time fans for obvious reasons as the books begin with the wind and now the added symbolism of that saying and the very concept of the wind in Robert Jordan's passing. Rafe has said that they tackled the wind in the pilot in what he thinks to be an unexpected but rewarding way. So be creative. If you were in the writer's room discussing unexpected and rewarding ways to tackle the wind in the Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime TV show, Pitch your idea and convince the writer's room here in live chat that yours would be the most rewarding and unexpected implementation of the wind. Okay, so with that introduction, the first person up will give us our idea. Andrew, you're going to go first here. What is your unexpected and rewarding way of tackling the wind in the Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime TV show? Okay, so what we thought about was that it would be unexpected and super dope if the wind was basically used as the motivator for the title credits for the intro to the show uh picture scene camera looking up at the blue sky with clouds and then it pans down swoops down so you're flying with the wind and it gets caught in the sails of a ship maybe it's a sea folk maybe it's not then there's a flash of this kind of whitish see-through force that pushes it out it was a weave of air that's awesome so that it travels over the coast, goes over the mountains of mist, throws up a bunch of snow, goes down over Amon's field briefly, continues on to Camelink, goes up into the White Tower and kind of blows past it. And, you know, you see an unknown figure on top of the White Tower with the stole that gets ruffled by the wind and someone next to her with a staff that like, they're all just like, oh, that was cold. And then it descends over the blight into Shaogul, where it turns up to a darkened sky before plummeting straight down into the mouth of a volcano. And you use that for the title credits. And as the show goes on and evolves, you take and you let more of the other cultures and areas that are seen 
become part of that title sequence. And it's, it serves the purpose. Like, you know, we can kind of follow the wind and get the feel that it really does go everywhere, that the story will go everywhere. But it also has the added uh, benefit of, and I know I hate to make the comparison, but it is somewhat reminiscent of the Game of Thrones intro. And for the show to be very successful, we want to appeal to all the Game of Thrones fans as well. So it incorporates just enough of that kind of same overhead look and feel while giving you teasers of other people, other cultures that you may see in the near future. And then as more are added and you're watching the show, you can be like, oh, that's X culture. That's X country. Like, oh, now I see them in the intro. So I, I think that could be pretty cool. Okay. Okay. Interesting case. Uh, I, I think I've, I've seen people imagine, I was able to kind of imagine what your um, unexpected and rewarding way is. This goes over to you, Elliot. Now your unexpected and rewarding way of implementing the wind in the wheel of time TV show. And you have two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. First great idea. But our idea for the wind was to make it almost its own character. Obviously, we're not giving it dialogue. This isn't the Stormlight Archives. But allowing the wind to take on a force of its own and have the ability to interact with the characters. So, for example, at the very start, when Rand is traveling through the Westwood with Tam, perhaps he's wearing a scarf or something, and he gets blown away by the wind. And this is what causes Rand to turn around and see the fade. The fade catches it. And this is important because I think that visually the audience may not clock that the wind isn't affecting the fade unless there's something also in shot to contrast it with. And I also think the image of a fade holding like a billowing scarf while its cloak remains frozen is pretty cool. Skipping ahead to the journey uh, back through the Westwood after Rand, Matt and Perrin have had a chance to convince each other that the fade was just their imagination. The audience, but not Rand and Tam, could be treated to a, a creepy shot of the scarf like tied to a tree, reminding them that the threat is still out there. Um, and we also wanted to carry this theme on of like wind warnings through the episode to other characters. So cut to Perrin's house on winter night. He's outside looking pensive. There's something strange in the air. He can smell it. And a strong gust of wind blows over an ax that was resting up against a stump. Perrin goes to investigate. And just as he picks up that ax, bam, that's when the Trollocs attack. So we think this works in two ways, because one, it's sort of a satisfying nod for book readers who already know the significance of the wind, um, but it also acts as an indication for new audience members who, you know, it shows them that these characters are important, that these characters have something special about them. The world itself is trying to help them and warn them. And I think that's a great way of sort of showing how being Tarviran works. Okay, okay. So, yeah, interesting ideas here, both of them. Uh, now we're going to go back to the rebuttal round here. Back to you, Andrew. Uh, you have one minute starting now to give us your rebuttal to either that idea or your final thoughts as to why yours is the right choice. Go ahead. Um, well, I mean, I, I like the idea. There's definitely some fantastic cinematograph, uh, cinematographic, what, insert correct word here, elements to that. They could look really cool on the screen. But with going with it being used as the title sequence, it kind of keeps Wheel of Time fans know that when they pick up a book and they open to the first page, the wind is the scene. That is what most people are like, okay, it's starting again. Here we go. Let's go. And to have that replayed as a nod to the books and as something for the fans, I think it's just going to be incredibly heartwarming. And we're going to love seeing that as something that introduces every episode, that everything starts with this wind. And it also will serve as that function of, a relative metric of how far this episode is in the series and who we may be seeing within this season, um, even if it's at the end of the season. Uh, and there's all kinds of ways they can go to, to have this fly over wherever they want to. Okay. Okay. And back to you, Elliot, with your final, you have up to a minute here. What is your rebuttal? Go ahead. Um, my rebuttal is, I mean, I love the idea. I think it would make a fantastic title sequence. Um, I really, really do. Uh, I guess my main argument here is it's coming out on a streaming service and skip title intro is going to be an option that comes up. And I think it'll be a lot of option that people by sort of the end of the series will be taking. Um, I think title sequences, though awesome, and perhaps Game of Thrones is sort of like a rare example of it really working, but I think they're kind of like becoming shorter and less crazy um, as TV is evolving. Um, and so, though I love the idea, I think having it just in the title sequence um, will be something that will eventually be kind of skipped. Okay. 
Okay, uh, we'll take you all off the screen here, and then we'll uh, let your uh, fellow team members come back on with us. We'll bring you back here and get their responses uh, for 30 seconds on what you know what their final thoughts are here. This is an interesting question, you know, uh, which of these to choose? Uh, you know, there's a traditional approach here, or a more traditional approach, and a much less traditional approach. Uh, nothing, you know, you both have in, in this have kind of chosen in other answers also kind of far opposing ideas. So yeah, I, let's hear what you have to say and we'll, we'll go to you uh, first here, Katie. You'll have 30 seconds. Final thoughts on why your choice is the right one. Go ahead. Yeah, I think when we're, we're talking about this, kind of the, the point that we were given was that we want something unexpected, but we're rewarding, right? So having a title sequence just feels too close to Game of Thrones, of course. Um, but then also it feels too expected. But having the wind interact with the characters, that's something that's really unexpected. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then to the last note here, Swana, you have 30 seconds. Give us your final thoughts. Go ahead. I think lots of people watch the Game of Thrones uh, title credits regardless. I know I did. Every season I looked for what was new added to the title credits. And I feel like you'll be able to do that with what Andrew has proposed. Also, I really, um, what Katie said about it not interacting with the characters, you could have it interact with the characters because it could be that last bit of wind at the end of the title, at the end of the title credits then goes in to the show, just very marginally. Okay, okay. That's interesting. Let's uh, thank you all. That was a that was a fun round. Um, I didn't really see an overwhelming response in chat while they were going uh, as far as which idea was really capturing the the if there was a majority so but before we vote and, and talk about that a little bit more why don't we show who the winner of round three was so go ahead taylor uh go ahead and include that in chat and we will then um we will then choose the next winner and uh, i saw a question i'll address here shortly <laughs> and then we'll jump in there i'm kind of curious oh team r i guess you were right there uh did win perrin is who everyone wanted to cut out of the show and 77%. Okay. So Perrin. It damn. is the choice. It's the choice. Okay. I, so, I didn't even yeah. vote for myself in that round. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to, someone asked why we don't use the first letter or the full names. We tried to make voting really easy and they both picked names begin with F's. So that didn't work. So we picked Heron and Rafe uh, and the first letter to make it really easy for people to type in chat to vote. And that's why it's H and R versus F and F. That would, wouldn't have worked out. Um, or full and faith. It would still have required more work on chat's part. We're trying to make this really easy uh, on all of you. So with that being said, Taylor, why don't you go ahead and add uh, the poll here in chat for this latest fourth round. I This one's so tough. I like both of those approaches. I like the whole idea that you can introduce new things into that title sequence and it just, it doesn't, it wouldn't necessarily be unexpected, but it would be very rewarding. And the other idea to me would be totally unexpected and perhaps really rewarding for very hard kind of core fan freaks. You know, they'd be like, every time they saw the wind move as a cue would be really, really cool. So I love the unexpected side of that. And so that, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what chat comes up with. H, if, uh, remember, you're voting H here. I vote H if you actually... Uh, want the answer to be the one that was proposed by Andrew, which is uh, that wind that kind of moves between place and place. Um, and then you're voting R here, if Faith and Wraith, if you like the idea of Elliot, like you said, basically with this, with the wind kind of creating kind of a cue and, uh, and a nod to, uh, I, I like the idea you brought up of with like the wind blowing the scarf. That was really, that was a really kind of creative idea there. So it'll be interesting, R, H and R again, that's what you're voting for. We'll leave this here in chat. You can continue voting while we move on to this fifth question. This one's gonna take a little bit longer for everyone to prep. Uh, so you can all stay right here and then we'll take you off screen and you can determine how you want this one. This was a surprise question for our participants. And so you'll be hearing this question as they hear it. So let me begin this by saying that the topic that they received was gird your loins my friends and that came from a question to rafe in a recent q a 
And it said, uh, the question was, have you made changes that hurt you and Sarah to make, but were necessary for the screen? Rafe's answer was, the writer's room floor is littered with my tears. Truly, though, I don't want people to be unprepared for how different the show is to the books. To do a proper adaptation, it has to be. As a thought exercise, just imagine we can only do four of the cities from Eye of the World. So Edmondsfield, Terran Ferry, Berlan, Shatter Logoth, White Bridge, Four Kings, Brins, Spring, Camelin, Faldara, which do you choose? What are the knock-on effects of character and story from the ones you don't go to? Which characters haven't met each other now, and how can you reconnect them? We have amazing writers and hugely helpful support in Brandon and Harriet to tackle these changes, but they're not small. Gird your loins, my friends. So that being the thought here, my question for both teams is this. What change or what series of changes do you believe led the writer's room floor to be littered with the tears of Rafe and Sarah. I want you to think about that and I want you to make a case here and we're going to give you a couple minutes. I'll talk to our I'll talk to our chat here. You can be thinking about that like I said and you can send uh, Taylor a note when you're ready. We'll take you off the screen if you need to chat between each other and the goal here is to pick which of you from either both teams wants to answer this question and then come up with the best answer you can. We'll still go along the normal format. You can fill it with as much room as you want. But like I said, we'll give you a, just a couple minutes here and just communicate with Taylor when you're ready. And I will talk to chat while this is going on. Um, try, uh, I think it's funny because chat's trying to fill the, uh, ch like what would you do? But uh, this to me is a really interesting question and really great comment from Rafe. And I appreciate that he did this, which is he talked to all of us as fans and basically said, there's going to be some big changes. Brandon's already alluded to this idea. There's going to be some big changes. Uh, and he, saying gird your loins, my friends, uh, was definitely, I think, a really kind thing of him to do for all the people here, honestly, that are watching this live, all the content creators, hardcore fan freaks that go on social media and talk about the stuff that are in forums and on Discord that literally are talking about this on a week by week basis. That message was for each one of us, which is there's going to be changes. Know that now, stop pretending there's not going to be <laughs> and get used to the idea because like Rave said, he's still trying to protect the heart and spine of the books. And uh, that's the important piece here. So uh, when you think about the writer's room floor, if you're watching this later or those of you in chat, you know, what are those, what are those changes? Uh, that, and, and I'll ask the teams, uh, by the way, let's not um, bring up any more than two changes to make room for the other team members to uh, actually have a change that they bring up here. So uh, I don't want you just listing off five changes, uh, but feel free to obviously focus to my debate participants on one answer, and that might be the easiest thing to narrow down to. But the question on the table for our fifth and final answer is going to be, what changes do you believe would cause or have caused Rafe and Sarah to leave tears littered on the writer's room floor. So, uh, Taylor, how are our participants doing back there? Uh, okay, they're still thinking about it? Okay, sounds good. Uh, just as a reminder for everybody, like I said, we're going to be coming back here on Monday talking about this watch party idea. We're going to just have fun. I'm going to pick another movie. If you were there the last time on Twitch, uh, it was a lot of fun. We, we watched Dora the Explorer, who Mad the movie that Madeline Madden's in. And we just used that as a, as a pretense to just test out how we implement the new show over there. And the whole concept, again, that we're doing over there is all about um, uh, watching these things together that other actors have done that are participating in the show and kind of talking about their performances and just enjoying some time to, as we call it, right, a watch party, or as some people have said, a rewatch party. So if you haven't checked this out on Twitch, Go look up the Dusty Wheel. It's fun. Go follow us over there. Um, and like I said, for the first 500 that go over there, we're going to do some fun giveaways. That's because we do. So um, I love, love watching some of the chat here. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's so many ideas. It's interesting once you ask fans, like, what would you do? Uh, you know, if you were forced to do this, it's not that they want to do it, but they will certainly throw up the things that they don't individually care about. <laughs> um, I like people arguing here about cuts uh, in chat. 
uh, it set off kind of a fun little uh, moment here. Uh, but yeah, I. Always <laughs> one person comes back, right? Um, or do they both do it? They're both, yeah, both. Uh, just like this will be just like normal. Um, they'll pick one. You can bring all four back, and they can tell us who they've picked as their team member, and then we can take them back off, and they can split off here. Or if they've already, um, if they already know who that's going to be, and you just want to bring them on, Taylor, you can. Oh no no! They're just picking one as a team. They're just arguing for one idea as a team. Like I said, if there's two specific changes that go into that one idea, that's okay to to have. Like a, it doesn't just have to be a singular idea, but uh, the whole concept here is to come up with a thought of what you would, what type of cut uh, might there be coming, and what it might have caused. You know, uh, being really difficult for Rafe and Sarah. So. Uh, it's interesting to see, like Clay just said, uh, yeah, uh, again, I don't think this affects um, what everyone's doing, but Bella, <laughs> Bob just said Bella dying. Yes. Uh, this, if you go back and watch chat, this thing is full of interesting decisions of how you would cut this. Um, and uh, so do we have our two here? Uh, Taylor, you're going to throw them uh, into, back into the debate uh, format here, or these, do you want to just chat with them real quick? Okay, so yeah, let me ask here. You can bring all four or three back in. And uh, Katie's coming back. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I know this is a difficult question to come up with on the fly. That's the fun part about this last question in the debate. Uh, so over to Team Faith in Rafe. Who's going to be the person who answers this question for you? I, I think that's going to be me. Okay. Elliot's going to try to take a stab at that. And then for Team Full Hair and Mark... Who's going to take a, a try at this answer? Andrew's going to do it. Okay, we'll take you all off the screen, then to your, <coughs> excuse me, your, to your fellow team members, as they once they uh, leave us here just shortly, we'll uh, bring both Elliot and Andrew back on the screen, and then we will hear what they have to say. So, uh, gentlemen, I think I gave the question about uh, Perrin. <laughs> I gave, as in the parent question that you both answered, I gave that to Team Faith and Ray first. So uh, in the event that there might be something that's uh, just obvious, uh, I'm going to give this option to go first to Andrew. Uh, Andrew, why don't you start us off here and give us your answer to this question. What change uh, do you believe uh, would cause or has caused uh, Rafe and Sarah to leave tears on the writer's room floor? And you have two minutes or up to two minutes to make that case. Go for it. All right. So with limited time, thinking of what would cause people to shed tears, it would be a change that uh, would be really hard to make. We came to the decision that we think that uh, it's not a full cut, but uh, we think the change is that Tam dies uh, in, in winter night, that he does not ultimately survive <clears throat> the slice from the Thakandar blade, that maybe they do it that by the time he's gotten to Moraine, uh, Moraine he's too far gone even her because we know she has a limited ability ability with healing that what she can do just isn't quite enough uh we think that this would add a ton of credence to one why Rand would be uh willing to leave the two rivers um you know like hey there's nothing here holding me down anymore i maybe some guilt maybe some survivor's guilt there from you know well they came here looking for me and my friends so you know, I, I caused my own father to die, which will lead further into Rand's uh, mental issues, the depression, the ongoing survivor's guilt, the I uh, must be hard or more people will die that happens later in the series. And it also opens the opportunity to bring Perrin and Matt closer into the fold with Rand, that maybe they're the ones that whenever we get the, the quote unquote Zen Rand, that maybe they're the ones that come back to Rand and are like, look, dude, you, like you were a friend, like what is going on with you? you have to fix this. And he realizes that he almost kills Perrin and Matt and it kind of fills that void there with, I hate to say it, but like relatively minimal changes to the rest of the series. I mean, Tam is a massive, massive character, but uh, I think that if we went with that, that Tam dies uh, in winter night, that ultimately it, it'll just add to Rand's tragic kind of story that we see that develops from either world on. Whew, yeah, this is a tough thing, right? Uh, 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 congratulations to you to, to be able to figure that out and uh, and present that in such a way here with just a couple minutes. Uh, so yeah, uh, interesting idea. 
Interesting idea. I, I, yeah, I, I could see it. I could see it. And that would be some tears on the writer's room floor. So yeah, you, you definitely fit that. Uh, so I love it. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Elliot, your team's idea, you got two minutes. Uh, what would cause tears or has caused tears? Do you think on the writer's room floor between Sarah and Rafe? Go. So ours is, is kind of a bit of a less of a cut and maybe, maybe more of a shifting. So it's not included in season one. Um, and that is meeting um, Elaine and Garwin and the whole sort of basically like Cainlin segment, in particular with um, like Loghain having been um, caught by the Aes Sedai and, you know, sort of shown through the streets of Cainlin. Um, and we think that although it's sad that we don't get to meet these great characters um, in season one, it would give the opportunity for Loghain to have not been caught and for his rebellion to still be in full swing during the events of season one, which could add, you know, the fact that there's a giant war going on with a false dragon could add so many more interesting story elements to our main character's journey. It also, we know Loghain is going to have a bigger part in this series. And so it gives us the ability to sort of, you know, cut back to his perspective and sort of see this going on. Um, which would be awesome to see. It'd be something new for everyone. Um, and it would also give us quite a lot of insight into sort of like the false dragon sort of like dynamic and, you know, how people feel about that because it would be happening sort of in real time. And so that's that's what we think, you know, it does mean that we don't get to meet Elaine and Garwin and Galad and have that scene in, in Camelon, but I think overall that could be moved to another point. Um, they could meet in other circumstances and I think it would be better overall though for the story to to see Loghain in action early on. Okay, okay. Interesting. Both cases there you have now up to a minute uh, to uh, rebut the idea that was proposed and or add to your own. So let's go back to you, Andrew, on this. Uh, go ahead with your rebuttal. All right. So since we're debating uh, these two proposed uh, cuts or changes, most of the reason that they're going to have to make a cut is because they have to make room for something to happen. And if they do this with Loghain, they're adding in more stuff that is going to ultimately result in some things being missed, some things being cut, some things not being included. Whereas with Tam, just from a pure practical standpoint, after the events of Eye of the World, it is a while before we see Tam again to make sure you had the same actor as Tam, that's a retainer you're gonna have to keep, that's an actor you're gonna have to pay or keep on contract, which you know a lot of actors will choose. That, that comes with some kind of cost and assurance. This fits a practical standpoint. We have to cut something to save money uh, and to use for something else. And it's because we have to cut something because we want to include this thing. Um, and even cutting Tam and not having to keep on retainer, it may later on allow for even flashbacks of what Elliot has suggested with Loghain. Okay. Okay. Back to you, Elliot. Before we bring your team members back, you have up to a minute here. Go ahead and, and make your rebuttal. Um, man, <laughs> this is tough. Uh, the only thing I really think of is, is killing Tam, I don't think actually saves that much time. Like, I see your point. The adding of the Loghain thing is you know, is something you would have to make time for. Um, but I think that could be done with the whole cutting Cainlin or moving it section. Um, and it doesn't have to be big. I think as well, it just adds more urgency to the character's overall journey to be having a war going on in the background. I think um, killing Tam at that point doesn't actually add that much time. Because I, I know you say he's not in it, but I, 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 I don't know how forward thinking the writers are if we are going from like a practical standpoint you know that i think they'll be focusing very much on this first season thinking maybe a little bit ahead but in terms of timing wise you know they've got to nail this because this you know is going to mark whether or not they get a series two um yeah. okay okay uh, we'll take you guys off and we'll bring your team members back on to uh, I'll give them, because this is kind of like uh, such a uh, surprise question, I'll give them up to a minute each if they'd like to use that. And w once they join in here, we'll, we'll hear their responses. Um, and we'll go to you, uh, uh, Swana, first. As far as uh, you have up to a minute here, and go ahead and give us your final thoughts of why the answer that you and Andrew chose is the right answer. Okay. Uh, the question was, what left Rafe shedding tears on the cutting room floor? It's a death. 
it has to be a death. You're not going to cry that many tears because you postpone meeting some characters in a later series because you're still going to meet those characters. Point two, no one is shedding tears over not meeting Garwin apart from John What Up, but we've already had words. No one's shedding tears over Garwin, okay? Sorry, no. <laughs> but I would, it would kill me to see Tam die it would break my heart it would give me so much sympathy for rand it would make me just feel for this child and be like oh my god what can i do to fix him and uh he i i think andrew made the perfect point in that keeping an actor on standby for that long until he can come back is it's it's not um something that's very easily done uh there's retainer fees there's a okay. lot to work. it makes sense to just yeah that's it uh, uh th sorry i had to cut you off there uh so i apologize uh but uh interesting points <laughs> sorry i think i i laughed out loud there a little bit with that gawain uh comment so sorry about that um didn't keep that professional i'll try to do that next time <laughs> go ahead and katie you got a minute go ahead and uh, give us your response well i think fundamentally the thing that made them cry is not killing tam because they didn't kill tam you you just can't do that making rand an orphan is too cliche it's something that's been seen before is making the hero start his journey because of his parents death and that's not rand's journey so it just doesn't seem like something that they would do and so they're not shedding any tears over it but i think move, moving or removing camelin and moving um rand's interaction with the royal family having rand miss out on seeing Loghain in a cage and seeing what we know is a foreshadow as of his future is something that could have really affected them, could have really made them shed a few tears. Missing out on that beautiful city that they did not get to see and shoot, the the towers and the walls and the city itself that we're missing by missing Camelin this season. Okay. There we go. That was our last question here at the debate. Thank you for uh, <laughs> well, well done, all four of you. Uh, this is, you did a great job. That was tough. Uh, like I said, those questions were pretty <laughs> detailed as far as what you're really trying to accomplish here. So, yeah, this is an interesting one. I'm. We'll, we'll open the uh, the. Um, the actual uh, choosing of who the won this last round, but let's find out who won round four first. Taylor, Taylor, do you have to show us who round four won? I think you figured out you had to show us the answer to that, right? Um, before you can start a new. Uh, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and show us who won round four. I think it's, if I remember correctly, is it uh, two for R, two Faith and Rafe, and one for Team Full Hair and Marks. So. There's no one, uh, you can't vote on, t on, on round four yet, but let's see who won round four. Okay, wow, round H, Team close. H. <laughs> okay, this is coming down to it. I think the last two debates, we actually knew the winner by this point. So congratulations, two to two. Team H won 52% of the vote. Thank you, everyone who voted. Like I said, if you're gonna not watch and not logged in, please do vote. Your vote matters, as you can tell here. So <laughs> that vote was close. Okay, this is coming down. This is a lot of fun. It's coming down to this final question and this final vote. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this vote and it's between the choices of, remember the question before you vote for this, obviously, it's what do you believe would have caused Rafe and Sarah to leave tears on the writer's writing room floor here because of a change that they had to make to the, to the actual TV show. Um, so with that in mind, Taylor's going to put the vote in uh, chat and you, you can start here. You remember you're gonna vote H if you believe in the idea that the thing that would have caused them to leave the most tears would have been Tam's death. And that's the change that was made. Uh, really great argument there. And then if you believe that it's uh, basic, <laughs> that, the, that the idea of not seeing Camelin here in the, in the first, I would assume first season, that that's the change. They couldn't go to Camelin and get all those scenes that fans are expecting and that that caused uh, enough pain for them that, you know, he would have uh, analogously said that they would have left some tears on that writer's room floor for that one. So that's that's Team R. Uh, again, Team H or R. I'm seeing votes for both uh, go up, up the screen here. You see some H's and R's. It's fun to kind of see this. So I want to ask you for 
now that you've made that argument for this question, while everyone votes, uh, are there other ones where you kind of thought about it but didn't choose to use them um, in that last minute? Were there things that came up, you know, when you had a couple of minutes to think about this that you kind of wonder? We were thinking about the uh, polyamor polyamorous relationship and that maybe the fact that Elaine hasn't been cast is because maybe Elaine's not going to be a major character um, and isn't going to oh. be a interest. So that was something that we definitely debated. Like taking her out almost completely, basically, and taking her out of that relationship itself. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Yeah, that would have been a significant change. I could see that I mean, one it, causing some there's, tears. There's so. so many good arguments against it, too. Because, like, I, I can see the argument, like, okay, we haven't seen Elaine. We haven't seen Avi. We haven't really seen much indication of them. But I'm like, uh, and I, I think, Solana, you said that there may be hints. Um, they could, they may mean that, that Rafe is. But I see it, like, with with the way we know Rafe is trying to bring this series started in the, you know, 80s and 90s into 2021 i i saw it as far too progressive of an idea that love doesn't have to be between just two people or something like that to cut and i think it sir it can serve too much of a function to start that argument where mm -hmm. it's like you know the kind of uh, the love is love argument so i'm optimistically cautious because i haven't no we haven't seen elaine or avienda and that could be because uh like elliot was alluding to with Camelon, they've been pushed back Sure. Uh, at least with the lane, but right. I don't know. Yeah. Anything else come up between on Faith and Rafe's team? You know, were there other thoughts that you had before you chose the one you did? I I think I just wish I had thought bigger picture. Like, hmm. you know, they're not just making decisions about this season, right? They're probably they definitely discussed the entire series, and I'm sure when you're looking at the entire series, all 15 books, that there were tears about things that they ended up having to cut. Things that would you know, they uh, had reverberate. To make, right, yeah. yeah, they had to mm. make decisions about things that are down the line. You know, I think they had to lay it all out. And I'm sure there's stuff that I'm not even yeah. thinking of yet that yeah. will make us cry. <laughs> yeah. I, I, cry. I, I, <laughs> Ellie, any anyone that came up to you that is standing out that or it has since you answered this question something you saw in chat that you were like oh shoot panic mode. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed an idea and went with it no it's good it's good it, like that is the purpose of that final question again for those of you that are watching us in chat you will give you another minute or two to vote uh on this last question it will determine whatever the hell this however this vote comes out it will determine who wins this debate and you remember you're doing exclamation point vote and then it's space h if you believe that the idea that would cause the most tears to Rafe and Sarah would be basically taking Tam out of the entire series um, with his death, or do you believe Team R's idea that basically that taking those Camelin out of uh, the season was a very difficult uh, uh, choice, and that they made that, or that they that would be a difficult choice, and that also dropped some tears or, or left some tears there. Yeah, I'm kind of curious uh, what uh, what this is going to be. Uh, I I do lean. I think. I lean a little bit towards the idea of like something shocking, you know, but both of these kind of have a shock value depending on how much of a purist you are about your adaptation, you know, like does an adaptation have to have all the core scenes? And Rafe did talk about that locations idea, right? That was part of his answer when he said this was four locations and how do you choose? And that's tough. Then again, unexpected things, big things happening. The death of major characters are unexpected. Oh, man, it's, it's tough. Okay, so I think that's probably the minute or so, Taylor, that they needed. Uh, you are, you're losing your choice to or chance to vote here. Taylor, go ahead and close out the vote, and let's find out who won this debate. Best of luck, everyone. <laughs> okay, good luck, everyone. You can no longer vote. Here we go. H1 at 64% of the votes. Team Full Hair and Mark, they won the debate. Congratulations, Swana and Andrew. You came from behind there, you know, uh, down two, and you picked up those last two uh, arguments. And, yeah, great job, everyone. Whew, that, thank you, everybody in the chat who voted. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. I hope that everyone enjoys this kind of thing that we're doing. Let's, uh, let's take a moment. You know, we got another 10 minutes left in the show. Let's do a little debrief on this. Uh, when we go back to any of those questions, and maybe go to, uh, yeah, anyone who wants to speak up here. Were any of these questions you find them more difficult than others that took you more? Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. 
Uh, I, I'm just going to say, and I, I put it in, in the chat that only we can see right now, but Katie, as soon as you popped up with Egwene being the balanced dragon reborn, I was like, how do I argue against this? <laughs> like, this yeah. is like the core theme of the series. It is balanced. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that was, a, that was, <laughs> so I good. actually, I actually liked some of the ideas that, that, that idea at first, like when you first brought it up, I was like, uh, but then as you kind of dug into some of those ideas of not really having to change much, but change the perception of viewers of what they might, you know, could right. there be more than one? And maybe there is. And would it be this, you know, would it, would it be, um, you know, Egwene and would it give some additional meaning to why some of these things are happening similar to what we get from Rand and such. Um, so yeah, I, I that well, was yeah, a, we, we, as, as hardcore fans, we love all of those little nuggets. And if they change something like that, where it's a fairly subtle change over the course of the series, but then at the end, it's like, oh, actually we're changing some of the foundation prophecies. That, yep. that would be, I think that would be fun. And plus there's also already the rumor that Egwene is an Aes Sedai from the Age of Legends Reborn, the Aes Sedai who was um, Luz Theron's counterpart. I didn't have time to bring up this point, but mm. you know, she was the one who, rallied the Aes Sedai against Luz Theron's idea of the strike at Sheol Ghul. And so having yeah. Egwene actually being her reborn and having those two characters connected to, through time, I thought, I think it could work. Once I realized that, I was like, I think this this actually could work. I got really excited about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun it's a fun thought. Uh, again, that's what the, the debate's supposed to kind of stir things yeah. that you aren't normally willing to, uh, you know, maybe think about or would ever want to choose, but you're kind of forced into that. Anybody else have a moment, uh, you know, as you go back and look at these questions where you you wish it would have gone one another way that you were thinking or one that I was have, just, yeah, go for I it. I had a pretty ludicrous suggestion at the okay. start. I wanted, I wanted at the end of the Eye of the World or the end of Series 1, um, I, I wanted to flip the taint on um so all of a sudden like you know it is completely reversed that would um, be a big change then, <laughs> yeah as we delved more into that i think it started to unravel um yeah. quite a bit but i was just thinking about what would make a, a good splash and then yeah. i think i think katie quite rightly was just sort of like i think i think you're getting a bit tired uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta uh any other any other ones that you thought were just uh, either ideas that you wish you now after the fact would have brought up or any of these questions that, um, you know, uh, really stumped you for a while. I think what stumped me for a while was trying to pick the quote. I found that one particularly yeah. difficult because I could think of so many from later books, but I couldn't think of anything uh, from the first three and I was really struggling and I was very tempted to go for something uh, with Nynaeve and then Andrew said about Ingatar and I thought oh yes that's that's such a moment but that one was definitely a struggle for me yeah. I think yeah and and I thought Elliot like it was kind of it was so hard to argue against that one because I that's such an incredible moment I mean I used to have a piece of art on my wall of that and I was just like why didn't my head didn't even go to that one I don't know why <laughs> and he was that like was, that was Katie's pick so I full credit to Katie <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I too was like of course of course it's this one like why yeah. why not and I was just rereading Eye of the World and and maybe if I had made it through my great hunt reread I would have gotten to the Ingtar scene and been like this one but I I didn't think of it. Yeah. Didn't there were so many I times. I think that's a, it's a great one. Yeah. There were a couple of times where you guys I thought had us absolutely dead to rights. Uh, like with the the wind question, where you're like, we're thinking of something unique and surprising. And I'm like, I was really hoping you wouldn't really bring that up. <laughs> okay, that's, fair, it's, it's yeah, not that's... incredibly like unique and surprising to have as part of the title credits. I, I actually do, uh, of those two questions, I... I love the idea of the kind of more traditional approach, if you will, and giving it a wheel of time twist. But I, if heart of hearts, I would think I would pick the idea that uh, the Faith and Wraith team came up with because I love the idea that it could be used as a cue. Not that it can't. We can't have both of these ideas, right? Both of these ideas technically can exist. I feel uh, they could so, merge together quite well. Like yeah. you could have, you'd have it just tail off from one to the other. And also, I mean, the question was uh, unexpected and rewarding. And I yeah. felt like 
ours was less unexpected but maybe more rewarding sure. because it'd be so much more inclusive of the entire fandom that's going to come from the tv show rather than just the book fandom right it was maybe a little bit more inclusive but i did feel that team Rafe's idea was more surprising so it was a yeah they, they, yeah they merged together nicely in that way you kind of is whatever kind of struck people as far as uh you know more initially rewarding when the show begins or just kind of this continual unexpected you know twist you know throughout the show like i said they can both happen. Uh, you know, they, that, that can both be the case. Uh, if you're watching this right now, again, uh, we didn't say this at all during the show, but please do like this video uh, so fans can find this afterwards. Again, just the way YouTube's algorithms work. Really appreciate it if you do. And if you happen to be here and this is the first time you were visiting us and you made it this far into the show, the very end, you're still here, so hopefully you like something and you'll give us a subscribe. We would appreciate it here at the Dusty Wheel. Uh, and for those people in chat, thank you very much for being here. That was a blast watching your conversations. It was really funny to see your debate participants <laughs> begin to use chat to try to convince you that they were right. <laughs> that was a new twist to our to our debate that now I have to make some rules for. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. That's okay. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I just realized I didn't say anything about that. So chat does make a great place to kind of go like, hey, what about this argument? Uh, that's really good. Uh, I tried so thank to make sure I used part of my time to basically restate what I stated. In the so it's still kind of <laughs> No, I appreciate that. Yeah, great debate. I agree. Like Road to Tarvalon said, uh, fantastic debate, a lot of fun. And just as a reminder, if you are still here in chat or afterwards you see this, I'm kind of curious. We're going to go back to the Wheel of Time books for our next debate. What would you like to see us tackle? Or what would you like to see us tackle for the next Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime debate? Um, I'm kind of uh, curious what that will be. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> Rajesh just said no chat for the debaters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I should have uh, just left it closed. <laughs> no, I, I like that it's there that you can vote. Uh, and luckily no one actually spent like the entire time there like while they were videos, their video was off, like <laughs> making cases of like, great job, you're doing amazing, but make sure to tell them about this. Just type uh, a full legal brief. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, fantastic show, everybody. Really appreciate all four of you being here. If you want to support these wonderful people, you can find Elliot. Uh, the thread has a YouTube channel. Elliot's put up some Wheel of Time content there. Elliot, do you have another Wheel of Time piece coming up anytime soon for our fans to know about? I do, I do. I don't know if it will come out on thread because it doesn't have much of a social change angle, but I am. I, I read Neil Gaiman's book on Norse mythology and I thought there's some there's some comparisons to be made here. So cool. um, there may be a book or a, a video on that coming coming soon. Awesome. Yeah, just, uh, you can find Elliot on Twitter, and I think I'm trying to remember if I have uh, other links. I can put them in the description if I don't, where you can find Elliot. Andrew, what's coming up next for the Black Tower podcast? Oh, geez. So we uh, we decided after two uh, two years and somewhat to uh, finally do a somewhat clickbaity title episode. And this Friday, we have our 10 Things You May Not Know About the Wheel of Time episode coming out. It is only supposed to be clickbaity in title, but we actually do try to talk about 10 things that are lesser known facts, hopefully about the Wheel of Time. Uh, and if they're not, uh, comment section is open and we want you to call us out for it. For sure. <laughs> if, you're, if you're like, I already knew this, then, you know, let us know. Like, I knew all of this, but did you know? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, and and Swana, to the, wheel, the Weaves of the Wheel community, what's going on with the Weaves of the Wheel community that you'd like people that are watching right now to know? Uh, well, we've recently started a podcast. That's myself and uh, my friend, Ren. Uh, if you enjoy listening to two British people talk about fantasy and the Wheel of Time and also give you a very unique take and a story about it, then do come and check us out. We're on all good podcasting stations and we also put it up on our YouTube channel, which is Weeze of the Will. Awesome. Yeah. No, I love it. Uh, is it the, I want to say shade, <laughs> that you would call it shade hose or something like that? I don't know what that is. Oh, I do. Uh, yeah, I have another project. <laughs> if, if you don't mind me shouting it out, it is yeah. called Water and Shade. Um, we are, yes, the shade hose. Shade um, hose. <laughs> it's utterly uh, ridiculous nonsense about the Wheel of Time and other nerd stuff. I absolutely love doing it. It's uh, comedy, tongue in cheek, 
Um, it's Drag Race crossover with Wheel of Time, which is actually a very um, popular thing. And we also got shouted out by Madeline Madden on Instagram. Thank you so much. Who she oh, said yeah? <laughs> that any crossover Drag Race content with Wheel of Time was winning content for her. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we are also on YouTube. Come and show us some support and some love. And if you want to get really ridiculous, join us on our Discord server. Um, we have lots of fun. Yeah, I think a, a lot of those links, I'll go check and make sure in the description here. And last but not least, uh, Katie uh, has awesome commentary and, and is always respi- re- kind of replying to the latest things that are happening with news and such on Instagram. Uh, yeah. Do you have any, I know you used, you were doing some kind of uh, live, not live commentary, but you kind of post your reaction to the thing. Can fans still follow you there and kind of expect that? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I post the stories a lot, um, you know, and sometimes to my main feed and just kind of seeing what's going on, you know, with the everything kind of quiet, I mostly focus on, um, you know, the TV production news and there's not a whole lot going on. So it's a little quiet. Yeah, it gets quiet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I like to, to kind of follow along and, and see, discover like new people on Instagram too. It's a great way to find artists. Um, and so it's fun to, to share things, to different people's stories and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a blast. I always appreciate your commentary. And that's how I, came to know who you were. And uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's why you're here is, uh, yeah, I, lo- I really appreciate your commentary on Instagram. And like you said, you can find Katie there. Just look up Katie Sedai. Uh, yep. And I'll try to put the link in the description also to this video. So, okay. Thank you all. A uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day or afternoon, I should say. And just a reminder, yeah, please hit that like button on the way out and be back here on Tuesday night for the, like I said, the Wheel of Time song parody uh, I guess you could call them, I guess they're not quarterfinals, the wild card round, and then the finals on Wednesday. And be on the lookout, like I said, over on Twitch. We're doing that little test again. It was a lot of fun last time. We were actually the top watch party on Twitch during our last test <laughs> for that wow. for that hour. It was a lot of fun. So we had a blast. Come join us over there, like I said, for the upcoming watch parties that will be starting officially next Sunday. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for being here at the Dusty Wheel. We always appreciate that. And as we say, good afternoon from the Dusty Wheel and smash to black. You went right to kill it. Look at you. You're all ready. You're just done. I mean, this is like, uh, this is one really of the biggest well. um, And now I'm like, great. My turn. <laughs> and if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have. Really but he caution. didn't. So okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress. And as you can clearly see, I'm not sad. I used to look at me as something along the lines of a Shadar Haran analog. Or it it does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, this, know, this is why I have think. Therese in the show because she's going to correct everything that. Hey, everybody! I'm wrong welcome about to the Dusty Wheel really. Show. What? Meme off challenge. Yay! Therese, like baby face mounted on like a huge body. So like all <laughs> this of is a not sudden, just a like, traditional wow. fantasy, right? There, there are sci-fi. And elements just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So let me get my guest in here with me, and probably I would let's say get, let's put in talking. 70, 80 percent of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.